My dog and I are walking down a forestry road. I'm looking for grouse. He's chasing rocks and sticks. As I'm walking down this road, I'm thinking about the different ways that people engage with the land and and how the terminology around the ways that we engage with the land is usually rooted in land use. And land use planners will often discuss you know, what is the highest and best use of the land? What's the, what's the way in which this land should be used? And when they're doing that, they're, they're often having to take into account multiple and sometimes competing interests, whether it be land for mining, agriculture, business, forestry, whatever it happens to be. And the part that I'm reflecting on is this aspect of use. The focus really is on land use and trying to, to balance the interests of land users. And of course, there's land users beyond humans and human interests and human use. There's all the plants and the medicines and the animals that are here as well. And they certainly have interests and often those will, there'll be attempts to incorporate those through through various ecological studies and, and whatnot. It's really kind of a, a human perspective on impact rather than, than interest, really. But a relationship that's based on use and only use is a pretty one-sided relationship. It's not, not much of a relationship at all, I figure. The best relationships have a an element of, of reciprocity where instead of just taking your you're giving back in return, not not because you have to, but because we have a responsibility to. So this forestry road that I'm on, it's an interesting one because in this area, it's not a forestry road that was put in just to cut down trees for their commercial value. This area has been really hard hit by a spruce beetle epidemic. And that spruce beetle epidemic has killed a, a lot of spruce in this area. You may be seeing them behind me as I go by. And so the act of coming in and harvesting those, those deceased spruce It can open up areas to allow other plants to, to grow and thrive. In a way, the clearing of those spruce can contribute to the ecosystem that's here. I mean, you could also argue that just leaving the spruce will also contribute to the ecosystem. But at some point, this ecosystem is going to need to have a fire. And by helping to reduce the size and severity of that fire, it will also help with the ability of this particular areas, the ability of this particular area to, to sort of rebound and regenerate after that fire. Because forest fires that are too hot can sterilize an area and take a long time for the, the biodiversity in that area to return. So the forestry in this area is a practice that it could be beneficial everybody and everything in this area and it makes me wonder it makes me contemplate how can we engage in our relationship with the land where it's not solely focused on use but focused on relationship so instead of like doing land use planning we're doing land relationship planning it's not just what we're taking and what we're benefiting from from the land that we occupy, what we're giving back to it, and how we help it out. Anyway, I'll keep walking around and looking for grouse and think about what they need. See you later.